most of the stuff never has happened before. I never became a model coach. I modeled, and I said, walk like me. This is what I'm looking for. And I started to be able to introduce different cultures. So it was really cool because it was a platform for performers, makeup artists, stylists, designers, models, bloggers. Um, so there's like six levels of jobs being created or opportunity to say, I want to make a name for myself. My whole entire film crew was black and Chinese. We had white people. I said, ah, I'll tell you later. But I made sure I looked for the black photographers who never fashion photographers became it now. Um, then we also had designers that actually was able to showcase on our show that linked back to their home country and, and different countries and they had a newsletter writing about them about our created event. So if you're a Zambia, we had a Zambian designer get noticed in a Zambian magazine about this actual article. So initially it was about fashion but my goal here is for it to be an economic driver around the people that are here that need an extra income. So we sold tickets, usually these events you don't sell tickets, so we sold tickets and we actually had some sponsors. So if you look at like, she's um, in her 50s, works for General Motors, first time modeling. So we oh, <laughs> yeah, she don't look, black don't crack, right, yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, the point of it is just to showcase that the, the, uh, the possibility of something new is really based on us. We're the ones that we've been waiting for, Obama has been saying for the longest, that we have to promote. And then some people here have gotten contacted by the Chinese. Their career has blossomed because we gave them a voice. They got notice. And this is just very new, and now we have pretty much an expectation of, well, I have an expectation to compete with Shanghai Fashion Week, which competes with New York Fashion Week, Tokyo, and these type of things, because we have the audience. We have the talent, it just needs to be matured. So going back to that, with that process, we have advantages and disadvantages. So we have access to the money pool. Um, every black person knows at least 10 rich pe person, Chinese person. It's just they are now being taught how to be able to do introductions. Um, second, the black people there also, as little as they, the money they have, because remember, we have R&B. Uh, money isn't as strong as US dollars or pounds, so it takes the, the amount of work we put in is pretty much double the amount of or maybe a U.S. person would put in. Uh, but we have the numbers, just like Chinese people do. So in Shanghai, there is 28 m million people, just one city, and within that city, you have 187,000 millionaires. In Beijing, you have about 23 million people, and you have 153,000 millionaires. And so just, just think about those numbers. 28 million people. Um, Australia's um, population, do you know the population? Yeah, around that, around that much. It's just so right, 25 million. Yeah. One city is almost as big as the country of Australia. So that economy in that, in Shanghai, it was like tr over a trillion RNB. It's a lot of money flowing. And so we as a culture really haven't seen the potential, how much money is coming and going. And, but we are part of their society because they look at us as tourism. So when we focus on tourism, like the world is looking at China. So therefore we get to see everything. We have a very international group of people seeing from stuff from Eastern European. So we have Chinese people going to Antarctica, planning trips. And it's like a tourism trip. So what's huge is that we have the information you need so you know how to sell to the Chinese eventually. Um, our, our diaspora, our community is full of so many Africans that in China and Africa, they're trying to become friends now. And so everyone is seeing that. So the U.S. messed up, so now China is there. Under that umbrella is us. So all of the inside information, what's going on within China and Africa, we have it too. So if you ever want to get business done in Africa, you should contact someone who's in China who's getting scholarship money from the Chinese government that will direct you right to the locals so you know how to be able to get the blueprint on the ground. Don't want to come the other way around because they look at you as a U.S. dollar. So that is, that becomes, you become a tourist rather than being an insider. So we have that advantage too. So I can easily go to Zambia Fashion Week, Nigeria Fashion Week, South Africa Fashion Week, just through the contacts I've collected there. And they've given me government connections, people with big business connections. It's a matter of like how much time I have. 
So you also have that time too once you tap in to start connecting because our community needs to talk to each other. Um, there's three categorized income classes. There are students, so there's, there's different kinds of students. There are students who are bachelors, students who get masters and PhDs. So there are some who actually get into like doctors so in terms of medical students that are very intelligent. They just need to have certification from China to go back home and do it. There's some of masters who are taking it just to find out what they can do. And there are some of bachelors just fresh off the ground. So that's like for us as free labor interns, like how you're doing. So a lot of those people are hungry and they're, once they get to China, like the possibility is starting to expand more than what they actually had thought about. And especially when they meet black Americans, um, it, it blossoms even more because then the conversation becomes person to person, not from what American media wants to say about us or what we hear about Africa. Yes. And that dialogue needs to be us talking to each other, not the white people telling our stories. Mm -hmm. And once that happened, something like that shows up. Um, and they talk about it's like a family reunion. So because we all miss home, and the closest to home is the next brother or sister who can understand and complain and talk about the issues. And then we need our entrepreneurs to create products to simplify our issues so we can at least hold on to home as much as the time we're there. And that's, a, that's an economic opportunity to create businesses, which Shanghai Black Fashion Week was that. We couldn't find makeup, we couldn't find clothes, couldn't find shoes, none of that was catered, catered to our domestic market, even though they were made for the, Europe, the outside market. It's like we couldn't go to the store and buy it, even though they're making it on our back door. Also, we're connected to social media, so anything that's actually with the Chinese conversation, when you talked about WeChat and WePay, um, or Alipay, we know the ways that they're actually spending money and what they would say what's popular. So for example, I talked to um, Jason about China had all of these Chinese people, I mean, Korea had all these Chinese people, then all of a sudden they stopped. Do you know why? It's something political. That's the thing, we can tell you exactly why. And wherever they go is where the economic power and it's, it's influencing that government. It was just because somebody made the Chinese person wrong, it's upset in the Chinese government, and the Chinese government says, no more visas. And if you had an existing visa, don't go because everybody else stops going. That's what happened to Taiwan. That's what happened to South Korea. It's making a drastic impact on the economic situation of other countries. So that means you've got to be in the know. So if you actually are doing business in a country outside of the China that's influenced by the Chinese, then you need to be ahead of the game so you can at least expect to hear the drama, what's going to happen, so you can prepare accordingly. So it's like cryptocurrency is uh, illegal, so we have people going around it, right? Yeah. Trying to make it work. So you gotta know that conversation we're having going around it so you can still capitalize on that Chinese money moving around. And a lot of that money is going to Africa on the One Belt, One Road initiative. And the point of that is to make uh, imports into China from Africa cheap. So they're re removing all the tariffs, all the tax. So that means Ethiopia, Kenya, the Eastern Africa, really great relationship. They're building their infrastructure so the Chinese could come set up businesses there and make stuff using their cheap labor to import it back into China. So they have access to an international field so they won't spend money in other people's country. So they want to control that money flow. So if we are, we are already in that money flow, all we have to do is just now take that money flow and ex create our own market and have that own process. And that's what I'm looking to do here in Korea, is to give the, the Korean businesses or Korean entrepreneurs opportunity to sell to us at the same time have us buy into it, just uh, sell to you guys so it becomes a marketplace. And therefore, not just for products, but ideas as well, and marketing. You talked about media. Um, it's huge if you start mentioning China anywhere in your media, people will listen because people are interested. If I gave you information to the, what's going on in China, then you would become an important source pool for other businesses, which is so important for every black media. So I've done media and it's gotten out that we're pro-black and there's so many people that's under that Wakanda hype that they're willing to do whatever it takes so we can have a true life, real life Wakanda.
um, access to manufacturing sector. It's, uh, we understand it because that's, they pioneered it so well that they got the world's money. So a lot of those manufacturers are now looking for cheaper labor. They're going under the One Belt, One Road initiative. They're going to um, South Pacific Islands, Eastern Europe, and Eastern Africa. Why? It's because these countries never put China down when they didn't have money. So if you ever plan to relocate into one of these areas, you should still go where the Chinese community is in those areas because that's where they, you're going to see the most flourished part and at the same time um, play an advantage over the other locals in that new that particular country so me going to Ethiopia it makes sense for me to go where the Chinese people are in Ethiopia because I speak the language I understand the culture and I become the bridge for the locals because they don't know what to do or how to respond of this new sense of money and new sense of control which is different from the European, so they haven't figured it out. For us, once we empower you with information, you can just become a bridge and once again get access to the Chinese money and flow it in our community and then become this, what Marcus Garvey and um, Claude Anderson had talked about, is to create our own economy. End of the day, that's what we're doing here.